So now that we have the engine started and running, we're faced with the objective of fitting the transmission into the back of the engine that already has the clutch on it. So we used a transmission jack of sorts, with two of us under there, keeping in mind that this thing is about 230 pounds with the back of the bell housing and the adapter plate on it. So take precautions, figure out a way to get it in there safely. If you have a two post lift and you can take the cab off, that's great. We didn't have that luxury available to us, so we had to use what we had. There's quite a bit of going back and forth about the angle, about the height. Using that block of wood and trying to make sure that it didn't fall over was really interesting and at times kind of terrifying. Uh, we put the slave cylinder in and lightly bolted it in so that the fork was in place and we could slide the input shaft in through the throwout bearing. That helped line everything up and we ended up using a very unconventional <laughs> method of basically doing a little leg press to get the thing in there. It's all about the angle of the dangle, you know, and to do that with 230 plus pounds in this compromising position, we just had to use a combination of leg pressing and jostling around. All right, so we got the transmission in, we got the input shaft inside the throw out bearing. We ended up just using the uh, slave, we put the slave cylinder in to make sure we got the fork lined up um, straight with the throw out bearing. So it took, as you saw, a little bit of finagling. We were actually using one of us with our feet kind of up here and kind of jostling around with the other person, adjusting it just enough to get these bolts in. There's four of them, obviously. They're a really weird size. It's half by 13 or something like that, American SAE. Mine was anyways. But it's under, it's, it's hanging off the actual engine. Now we're gonna work on um, getting our cross number in and then fabricating a mount in between them for the mounting space, which is up here underneath. All right, so here we are in the cab. We're trying to get our transfer case shifter hooked into the NB4500. So the bracket that I have is going to fit on three of the existing bolt holes in the NB4500 case. They'll be going through the aluminum top with the shift forks and into the cast iron case. So it's going to be this one, this one, and one up here by the uh, breather tube. And then on top of this, first of all, you're gonna have to take a uh, pin punch to get that pin out of the regular casing for your shifter, for your transfer case. This is your transfer case shifter, not your regular shifter. And then this would go in, it goes in this specially designed piece, which will go on top of this. And this is obviously connected to the lever, which will connect to the transfer case. And then this fits just over top of it like so. And you'll thread this longer bolt through, which will go through the MD4500 along with these two. And then these shorter ones, I just have some shorter bolts because to get this in there, there is already machined threads in there. I'm unsure of the thread size. Anyways, that's how that's going to go. Let's go ahead and test fit it in there. Oh, and then of course, you're going to want to get some standoffs, stainless steel so you don't rust. I'll laugh out loud because everything is rusted and I didn't paint it yet. But anyways, these will go around there like this on the bottom side of this so that there's something for this to stand on like so. Let's get it in. So now the issue I'm facing is if this is in neutral now, obviously there's no room to shift into first, second or first, third or fifth. So We've removed the Dodge shifter from this casing. This will just pull out right now because it's not locked in, but this is gonna have to be modified to get maybe like a 15 to 20 degree angle on here so that we have room to shift forward. And also we wanna make sure we're not contacting our transfer case shifter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this and then try and make a 15 degree angle going like this. And then, so I can lean this back a little bit. All right, so here's our shifter that we took apart from our NV4500. This would normally be straight, but we bent it. So this is going to go in the NV4500. It's not secured all the way in there. You have this little collar with the spring and it'll rotate in there to lock it. But for now, we're just mocking up for test fitting and we have our shifter. This is from a 87 Toyota pickup. 
and uh, we're gonna just fit it over there now just to check our clearances. This is on there loose, obviously, right now. It's gonna be welded as soon as we figure it out. I just got here, though, and uh, noticed that I have a lot more clearance. This is obviously wobbly. I'll have it throw it straight back like this when I weld it, and this is first. This is, can't get it going third, but fifth. I have to lock it all the way in to get into third, I think, though, and all the others, so there's second. And I'm not gonna be able to get into rest until I get it all situated. But yeah, um, I'm gonna go weld that now. Actually, before, let me check with my clearance for the um, transfer case so we're not getting in the way of that. So we were able to get the piece de la resistance, as the French would say, for the transmission to mount to the Toyota Cross member. So this is in this stock location on the frame, Toyota Cross member. This is the transmission mount from the Dodge, the, this bell housing for the NV4500 at the back. This is the adapter plate. This is the, I don't know, HF24, I'll put it up here. Whatever the Toyota transfer case is out of a 95 with the viscous coupler. Drive lines installed, everything made it up. This is acting as a buffer in between the NV4500 and the Toyota transfer case. So this basically moves the mount point back. We're just a little bit further back from the stock mounting location. So that means my front drive line is extended a little bit further than I like and my rear is compressed a little bit more than I'd like. Might get these retubed. Probably going to go with super duty one tons out of an 05 plus with the 35 spline that you can put the 1550s on. So not too worried about those at the moment. Anyways, you're gonna need some way to move your mount back a little bit. This piece is awesome. Um, this was put together by Dustin that made this whole kit for me. This is made out of machined aluminum and it has the recess in there for the dodge bolt holes and then just a nut in there. And then it has provisions for the hardware that goes through this cross member here. So that is an awesome, awesome setup. I'm really a huge fan of that. And everything is working. I have confirmed that everything moves correctly. Uh, first drive will be coming up here shortly. Now we have to get in the cab and look at that mess. We've got our shifters here. This is all preliminary. Don't worry, I know it's ugly. I did have to cut a little bit out of this section in order to get room for the shifter. Like we said, we bent this back, welded it. And then now I'm in the midst of figuring out where this is going to go. This is the stock Toyota seal, I guess, that goes to the on the firewall in the tunnel. It didn't quite fit. I had to obviously cut the automatic shifter and some of the other um, provisions for sensors out of here. This does work now, but I'm probably going to have to cut this whole center section out so that I can fabricate my own boot. The reason I haven't finished this up is because, first of all, we wanna make sure that all the linkages are working and perform more test runs. And then also I did pay already for a prototype or some sort of um, center console that has been designed before. I'm not sure if it's on a CAD file or what. Uh, that's gonna take a little bit longer from Dustin. So in the meantime, I thought I'd work on other things, but for now this has is been working. There's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and reverse. And the coolest thing is this mount, which I was showing you earlier, we're in four high now. So there's no contacting in between fourth and high. That's neutral. And we can shift it into our low gear. So I do really like that part of the kit. There's been a lot of thought, years of thought and engineering going into this. So I appreciate that. I don't mind paying the extra that I did for this. Just a little PSA. I've been working 50, 60 hours a week and trying to get all this done behind me, as you can see. Tanya's got her bumper on and some other stuff I'll go over in a little bit, but uh, the reason that it's taking so long to get these videos out is because one on one hand, I have to work 60 hours a week, other I have to work on this and I haven't had any progress enough to make a video and I don't wanna just upload videos that are not fun for you guys to watch. We wanna make sure that everything's ready before we announce that this wire is going here, this is mounted here, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm not gonna do Patreon. I don't wanna do that. I wanna be asking for money. Um, you guys can support like you've been, which has been awesome, and you guys have been killing it by subscribing and just watching the videos. Um, I hope I can make content that you guys all like. You know, things like 
we forgot to plug in an NPT oil pressure sensor. Um, and we were turning it over and it was shooting oil out like a geyser. And that's obviously, you know, you could make a video about, oh, you know, oh, we almost blew up the engine and do clickbait like that. I don't want to do that. I don't like clickbait. I don't think you guys do. I feel like I have wasted my time when I click on those videos and there's a lot of them. So anyways, we're trying to remain true and post relevant content. We're close to getting monetized. So all the ad revenue that you guys watch the ads for is going to Google, which is fine. You know, that's great tech giant and everything, but we get to a thousand subs. I already have the 4,000 hours of watch time. Then we'll be monetized. All of the ad revenue that you guys are generating by watching these videos will go back into the channel. Just wanted to say that that would be the most awesome Christmas present. Again, you guys have been killing it. Subscriptions have been going up exponentially. The next video is going to be fabricating the exhaust and that will be a fun video. We're going to be doing a hood stack. Stay tuned for that. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hope you've had a great year. It's just fitting that this whole build has come to fruition about a year after I bought the Dodge and at the end of the year. So it's been a long year. We've worked really hard. Thanks for watching.